Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. It might be a good few years until the UK is expected to go to the polls again and elect a new government, but that doesn't mean that 2021 is a quiet year when it comes to elections. In fact, on May 6th, there are local council elections, there are mayoral elections, including the Mayor of London, the Police and Crime Commissioner's elections, the Welsh Synod elections, and importantly for today's video, the Scottish Parliamentary election. Following some significant scandal in Scotland, and with independence as an ever-present issue, we wanted to address the Scottish parliamentary election, telling you what the election is all about, who's running, who's likely to win, and if all of this could lead to Scotland leaving. Also, if you'd like us to do videos on the local elections and their potential to secure greater Tory control, the mayoral election expected to re-elect Sadiq Khan, what police and crime commissioners actually do, or even a video on what's happening in Wales, then like this video and comment what you want us to cover down below. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can be notified when all of that and our other videos are released. So, Scotland. Let's first discuss why this is important, and what the Scottish Parliament actually does. Representing Scotland's 5.5 million citizens, the nation's 129 MSPs are facing re-election on May 6th. Despite their similar name, members of the Scottish Parliament, or MSPs, are completely separate from the MPs in the House of Commons. Scotland does send 59 MPs to the House of Commons in the UK's general election to vote on matters impacting the entirety of the UK. These 129 MSPs don't need to commute down to Westminster though, as they work in Holyrood, the Scottish Parliament. This doesn't mean that they're not important though, as these MSPs have wide-ranging powers in Scotland, including powers over things like health, specifically the running of NHS Scotland, education, including schools and universities, hence Scotland's lack of tuition fees, local government and councils, law and order, covering things like police, courts and the prison service, environmental protection, some powers to top up benefits offered centrally, and to pay for all of that, powers over taxation, specifically the setting of Scotland's VAT and income tax rates. Westminster still has a bunch of reserved power, covering things like defence, foreign affairs, central economic policy, benefits and social security, immigration and constitutional affairs, but it's clear that the Scottish Parliament does have its own remits and its own significant powers over Scottish life. So this Scottish parliamentary election is important, and it could mean some big things for the country going forward. So let's discuss the important matter of voting, because the way you vote in Scotland is a little different to the general election that you may be used to. Instead of having one vote, Scots are given two, each working differently, so bear with me here. The easy one is the constituency vote. There are 73 constituency MSPs in the Parliament, all of whom represent a specific area. Their constituents vote using the first-past-the-post system, so whoever gets the most votes in the constituency bags the seat. Then you have regional MSPs. There are eight regions, each of which elect seven MSPs, using a proportional system in order to ensure that parties are allocated these regional seats based on the percentage of votes they picked up within the region. That means that in total, Scots are represented by eight MSPs, one constituency MSP and seven regional MSPs. Let us know what you think of this hybrid system, by the way. I know a lot of our viewers are very interested in election systems, so it would be cool to see what you think in the comments. Anyway, that's what the Scottish Parliament does, and how MSPs are elected. But let's talk about 2021 specifically. Going into the election, this is what the makeup of the Scottish Parliament looks like, with the Scottish National Party, or SNP, dominating the body. However, despite being the biggest party by some margin, they did, they did fail to win the majority in 2016. The Conservatives and Labour both have a significant number of seats too, 30 and 23 respectively, but even when you combine these two parties, they still fail to reach the seat count of the SNP. Going into 2021, the SNP will be hoping for their fourth consecutive victory, and praying that they can reclaim their majority, but which issues are really resonating with voters? Health is clearly a major issue, as an area where the Parliament has quite a lot of power, especially during the pandemic. As such, Scots will be looking to show their confidence or lack thereof in the current leadership when it comes to this vital issue. Also important are other classic issues like education and increasingly the environment. 
If you want a full video on the topics that are being discussed in Scotland and how the parties compare, then let us know in the comments. But more important than ever, and the one we'll be focusing on now, is independence. Scottish independence has been a major issue for a while now, one that drove the ascent of the SNP, or was driven by the SNP, depending on how you want to look at it. But the issue has become more important in the light of Brexit. We don't have time to debate the merits and demerits of independence, or whether another election should even be held, but it seems that a growing number of Scots might be in favour of it. Sentiment has been fluctuating a bit lately, but on the whole, polling suggests that most Scotland support an opportunity to vote again on the issue, and seemingly would vote for independence. The SNP unsurprisingly agree, pushing fervently for another vote. The Scottish Greens are also on side, joining the push for the independence referendum. On the other side, you have the big UK parties, the Conservatives, Labour and Lib Dems, all of whom reject this notion, saying that the country should be focused on other major issues like Covid rather than big constitutional questions. Ultimately then, this might be the divide which shapes May's election, with it already becoming heated during the leaders' debate this week. Nicola Sturgeon said to me, or said to us, she is focused on Covid and all that goes with it. If that's the case, how did she find time to put an independence bill through Parliament while we're still suffering Covid? That's not a focus. Um, so my question was very much similar to Selwyn's in that back in November 2020, um, Nicola Sturgeon was pushing for another independence referendum. So is the focus really on, um, on a Covid recovery or is your focus on a referendum? Well, if I can answer Selwyn's point, first of all, we haven't put an independence referendum bill through the Parliament. We've published a draft, as we said we would. I think it's nine pages long. I'll leave other people to judge whether my focus has been uh, on the pandemic or not over the past year. People have seen me literally every single day uh, lead to the country's fight against COVID. Um, and I have literally spent almost every waking moment doing that rightly and properly as is my responsibility as first minister and i will continue to do that for every single day that is required out of this crisis because it is not over yet i've spent the day today not on the campaign trail uh, but in the scottish government headquarters talking with my clinical advisors making sure we're continuing to try to take all of the right decisions but as we come out of this crisis and we focus on recovery as we need to do recovery is not a neutral thing uh, what you recover to what kind of country you're trying to rebuild depends on the decisions government takes and as long as so many of the decisions lie in the hands of Boris Johnson and uh, governments at Westminster that often people in Scotland haven't voted for then the danger is we take the wrong decisions and go in the wrong direction just as we've been dragged out of the EU against our will so these are big decisions but right now my focus Focus every day is on COVID. Now, while all the parties tonight are speaking about recovery, there's one big difference. The SNP want to take us through another divisive independence referendum, and the Scottish Conservatives want to stop them. The future of our country is at stake. So if you want to stop that referendum again, if you want to protect jobs, restore schools and rebuild Scotland's economy, then vote Scottish Conservative. The ultimate question is, do people want to back the parties gunning for a referendum, or those against it? Although their polling has dropped in recent months, the SNP do continue to lead the way, seemingly answering that question. In most constituency polls, the SNP are predicted to pick up around 50% of the votes, while regional polls place the party at around 40%. If these polls are correct, then it puts the SNP ahead of their 2016 performance and looks like they're on track for a victory, with elections expert John Curtis remarking that it's not a matter of if the SNP win, but by how much. Although it has to be said that all of this polling was conducted before the launch of Salmon's Alba party last week. So if the big issue is independence and the pro-independence party looks likely to win yet again, then what does this mean for the makeup of the UK? Well, even if the SNP do win and push for another referendum, it still needs to be approved by Westminster. Under the Scotland Act of 1998, the Scottish Parliament is not allowed to pass legislation relating to matters reserved to Westminster, including the United Kingdoms of Scotland and England. Most people interpret this to include constitutional issues like independence, although admittedly this has never officially been tested in courts. Regardless, it looks likely that the SNP would need sign-off on this before any referendum was even possible. 
This seems unlikely though, with Johnson and his government repeatedly saying that they wouldn't support another referendum, with the PM saying that there shouldn't be a rerun of 2014's once-in-a-generation vote. Some in the SNP hope that a big win for the party in May could change this though, suggesting that if Scots vote for their pro-independence party, it could force the Tories' hand, although not everyone's convinced by this theory. Despite the SNP and Sturgeon being avidly pro-independence and pro-referendum, some have suggested that they might not actually want one immediately anyway. It's very possible that even with a win under their belt, they might prefer to wait a bit longer. Ultimately, the margin of support for independence is slim, and if Brexit's taught us anything, it's that you don't want to assume how a referendum will go. So maybe they'd rather wait for a future day, where they hope that independence support would be more solid, rather than risk losing again and be forced into a third referendum in the years ahead. Anyway, that's the Scottish parliamentary election. That's how the system works, who's running, what they want, and who's likely to win. Let us know your predictions both for the election and for independence in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.